Uh, this time I'm gonna show you something new for a lot of guys. The inspector he couldn't make it because he's sick, so I called the the city hall and I told him if I can email him some pictures of my uh, job in progress, my roof sheeting, and they can sign me off online. They told me it's okay, so you can do that. Okay, in case if you have inspection or the inspector is not available, you can always request an on online inspection. You can send them uh, pictures, videos, whatever, and uh, of all your details, you know, like right now I'm taking a video for the, not for the city, I'm just gonna show it to the guys on the internet, but you can do that, okay, anytime. Uh, so, I'm, I'm gonna send it with, the, with another picture, uh, hopefully they can sign me off online, and otherwise I'm gonna have to wait till next Next coming Monday, today is Wednesday, so I have to be off uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days, so uh, that's a lot of time. Well, I can do another things, but I don't want to delay this job because otherwise I'm going to get all all, uh, all stuck, you know, with uh, too many jobs at the same time, and uh, I won't be able to finish them one time. All right, I like this thing because it uh, has a bunch of details. You see the little cuts right here? It's all cut up, so it makes the details in, like interesting. What's up, guys? Uh, today I'm gonna take this video. Um, a lot of people complain about my videos. They say that I don't show them the process when I start a new roof, and then I and then I finish uh, the. the I, I don't show the process when I start the removal, and then through the process when I replace wood and then you know paper and stuff like that so they want to see the whole system in one video but sometimes you only give you like you know if you watch a 30 minute video it's a boring video so that's why i'm gonna try to make it shorter but anyway i'm gonna guide you through the steps uh in this case i have a space sheeting it's called uh one by six uh one by six uh um sheeting uh, it's not solid because it's an there's an open there's a gap of half an inch in between the slots so I just replaced the ones that are broken uh, but by code I'm supposed to have two nails per slot and then three nails on the ends okay that's what the uh, inspectors and also the um, the four inch pipes they don't supposed to touch the wood they're supposed to be a minimum of two inches all the way around don't worry about these pipes these are just like uh, plumbing pipes and also another thing uh, you see these little pieces of uh, metal this one has to cover the uh, the holes on the wood sometimes you know the wood has some holes like this let me see if I can turn it you see like this so the inspectors they want to see a piece of metal so when you nail they want to see that you nail on top of something solid well and also right here I replaced the uh, the damage uh, starter boards and these one are called one by six boards. Uh, I use, I usually use uh, a self adhere membrane along the valleys, and then I overlap my my felt on top of it. In this case, I I paper the top of the valley because I loaded my material on top of it, so that way I don't have to be moving it. You know, like. Uh, moving it from one place to another it takes time and then it's time consuming so so you're trying to uh, do it you know save time by mean by save time I don't mean by going like crazy you know nailing like crazy like a lot of people see on on the internet uh, you have to take your time but it's a process so you have to uh, you have to use the time for you to prep your uh, roof properly right here I'm gonna have to remove uh, I'm gonna have to lower those uh, rolls I'm gonna have to pull the this uh, uh, paper back so I can uh, throw my uh, my peeling stick along the valley right here you see it so this is called valley I'm gonna throw a peeling stick I'm gonna throw another one on that side it's gonna look like that and after that I'm gonna throw half of the peeling stick all the way around overlapping the edge metal because sometimes you know when you have like I don't know for some reason we have like heavy rains the, some of the uh, 
the breeze goes underneath the edge metal and then it, onto the wood. So that's why you know they want me to throw like half of the peeling stick all the way around on the eaves and on the and on the rakes. This one here are called rakes, okay? I'll take another video later on. I want to take this video for all the guys that ask me how do I get straight lines. You know, it's awful when you see a roofer that he calls himself professional and then you see him with the crooked lines. You see my lines how straight they are? Okay, this is the secret. <laughs> Sometimes you know the fascia board is crooked. So if you follow the fascia boards, uh, sometimes you're gonna end up with the crooked line. So what I do, I usually do this, look. Check this out. I usually uh, snap a chuck line about 18 and a half inches from the starter. After you put your starter, uh, mark 18 and a half inches. So this shingle is gonna overlap half an inch on top of the other one. So this one's gonna be a short one. This is five inch exposure. This is uh, five, five and three quarters. So you're gonna have about three quarters of an inch on top of the first course. So the first course is gonna look crooked, but then your your other lines are gonna be straight from the second course and up. And you're always gonna end up with, with straight lines. So take that time, okay? Measure 18 and a half inches from the, from the, from the starter to here a snap a line before you start you know laying out your shingles and then uh, snap a line and then just follow this line with the second course and then you're always gonna have a second uh, you're always gonna have a straight lines okay see it always do that okay always always because right there the the uh, sometimes you know the fascia board is crooked you know up and down up and down so if you follow that then you're gonna end up with ugly lines and some and some owners you know they're really careful about their installation so so you wanna so you wanna end up with a crooked lines okay so that's the secret for uh, straight lines okay mark 18 and a half inches on the second course you see like this this is the second course on the top so you can cover it never throw it on the bottom because you're gonna everybody's gonna see it so always hide your uh, your check lines okay take your time it takes about three minutes to measure it's not a line it's gonna save you a lot of time okay if you're gonna have a if you're not gonna have a rich bend you should uh, just overlap the the top of the shingle on the other side you snail it down but if you're gonna have a bent that rich then you should cut the opening for the for the rich bend. okay and then later you measure if you if your rich uh, covers the all the way to the uh, to the market to, to this line so it's supposed to overlap I think I'm gonna put a little piece right there see this is a simple shingle roof but when you apply uh, your effort to make it look nice so even though if it's a a lot of people call it cheap roof or the shingle roof it looks beautiful okay you see it I even throw a check line on my my valley so I can make the lines look straight, okay? Remember, once you install the shingles, they're gonna stay like that for for life. Usually on those, uh, I haven't nailed down this metal because right here I'm going to install like a longer nail, like inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Usually what happens when you nail this one with the small nails, they usually come up, so the metal, when it spans and contracts, uh, it comes off the wood, so you have to nail a reel with uh, longer nails, okay? See how straight my lines are? Even though the first uh, the first course uh, looks crooked on the outside, from the second course and up, it looks, it looks better. And now I'm gonna do my little detail right here, this little uh, hip. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna install my uh, my edge metal, I mean my uh, starter, and then I'm gonna take the time to mark eight, one 18 inches and a half, 18 inches, and slap a line so I can come out with the straight lines also. I don't care if it's a small area. Remember, this roof is gonna stay here for another 30 years, so you won't be here probably to replace it, so make sure the next guy who remove it, at least he's gonna say, you know what, this guy did a beautiful job.
Okay, think about it. Snap. T takes two minutes. And this line is gonna make sure that you have a straight courses, okay? Two minutes. I'm gonna show you a secret. Hopefully you don't share with nobody. No, just kidding. <laughs> Always when you install your, uh, your lashing, round out the corners, okay? So they, like this. See it? That way, when you nail on the sides, uh, the flashing is not gonna bend up with the heat. Usually happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a video when I uh, I go around the neighborhood and I see the the uh, this flashing. They all bend up. They look so ugly. So I'm gonna tell you this one is gonna prevent that. Okay, always round it up. Okay. My flashings. I put the nails every two inches. Cause metal usually expands and contracts. And this is space heating, like sometimes it's not grabbing into the wood, you just grab on the empty slot, so. Don't worry. Okay, don't be cheap on nails and then put one and two nails in the front. Okay, that's gonna keep it tight. Another tip, it's uh, stay away from water heater pipes. See like this. Make sure you two fingers like any side. Shut the hole like this. Okay. Don't touch any paper, no wood. That's why they put this piece of a uh, strap in uh, strap on the inside to keep it. This is the water heater pipe, so be careful. Okay. Do the same thing. Cut the cut the corners. So my guys, they don't cut them, but uh, lately I've been asking them to, to cut them because I don't want to run through the same problem. It takes more time, but it's better. One huge favor, put a lot of nails in your valley, okay, on the edge. At least every, every five inches. happens with the valley metals uh, if you don't nail them right uh, they work you know they get like they lift up the shingles and they look so fucking ugly I'll show you how, how they look when they when you when you don't nail them right also in the top you know I've seen some guys that they don't put enough nails on the valley just like a couple of nails I mean for now they're, they're gonna stay flat but with the with the moisture the cold weather, the hot weather, the metal is going to bend up and then it's going to lift up the shingles. When you get to any valley, measure from the ridge to the last shingle and then snap a chug line. And then you can do the little valley so your, your lines are going to perfectly match. Okay, you see I just finished right here on the valley. So I'm going to... I'm gonna throw a chuck line all the way to to the end. Already did. This is my chuck line. Right. Like this and then out. And this is how you do it. See, they follow the line, and then your lines are gonna perfectly match. See? It? That's the secret. Okay. For today, today I did the part of the garage. I did this side. I finished this side. I finished that side. The little the little heap over there on that side. I finished this side. This detail. All this. And tomorrow I'm just gonna finish the garage, which is three squares. And also a little a little overhang on that side, which is uh, two squares. So I got five squares tomorrow. The ridge, uh, paint and cocking, and that's it. Pick, uh, we already picked up the trash and everything. So 
we pick up the trash as we go so we don't have to pick up at the end of the day. I only have to do this side uh, and this little side out here. So we finish all that. See, make sure that you throw a chuck line on the eave about 18 inches and a half on the second course. So that will give you straight courses. See it? Straight. Straight, straight, straight. Also, I snap a chuck line along the valley if you're using a valley metal. If you're not, then just do, just do the California Valley. Right, sayonara. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. And then I use uh, clear silicone or any uh, silicone that's made for it. This is my exposed nails on the, on the bottom, but then I seal all the way around there. And then I just let it dry. Okay, and then I show you the second step. Showing it zero gray. Same thing on the other uh, valley, I snap a line and then I make it straight. Color shown, zero gray. If you like it, try it in your house. This is how I finish the pipes. I put a tape around it. It's a sticky tape. It's called Eterna, I think Eterna Bond, something like that. They said it lasts forever. It's designed for TPO, uh, PVC, any type, shingles, flat roof, torch, hot mop, sticks or anything. So I remember a long time ago, one company, they made us use it because they said it was better than Nankaki. I upgraded it a little bit. I put cacking steel underneath, but then I put the tape around it after I finished. All right, this is how I did my details. Remember to snap a line on the second course, 18 inches and a half above the, from the starter. So that way you'll get a straight course. Sayonara.